Hey everyone, it's Casey. So the sun is starting to set, so I'm gonna kind of fly through this last portion. It's regarding getting a bank account in Taiwan. So once you get hired in Taiwan as a cram school teacher, or whatever have you, you're required, of course, to have a bank account and you have to provide um, that information to your, ba uh, to your employer. So I wanna talk about things you'll need when uh, you're opening a bank account in Taiwan, where to go, and then finally what you need to give to your employer. So first of all, when, you come to, uh, when you're ready to open your bank account, assuming you have an ARC, or you're about to get your ARC and you're certain you're going to live in Taiwan, is you're going to have to get a stamp. So I'll talk to you about what you need when it comes to a stamp and um, you know what the purpose of it is and things like that in a bit. But what you'll need to actually get the wooden stamp or it could be a plastic stamp is uh, you could pretty much go anywhere in Taiwan, especially near uh, like cram schools. They'll most definitely have places where they'll say they'll show like a lot of little wooden little things that look like this this is the stamp and in there they'll typically be able to carve out a stamp for you uh, sometimes that photography printing or yeah photography printing kinds of places they could print or make stamps for you you could even order it online now as well uh, which i'll talk about in another video about online ordering things like that in taiwan so before that though you actually need a Chinese name. Now, I'm not sure if you come as a visitor and when you get employed, if you need a Chinese name. That, I'm honestly not sure. When you come as a student, I do know, uh, according to my friend, uh, I'll call her Shino, uh, according to her, uh, yes, you will need a Chinese name. But um, I'm not sure about when you come as a visitor's visa and then you get a working visa if you need a Chinese name. But either way, you'll need a Chinese name to open a bank account. I'm pretty sure you do. And one thing to keep in mind about uh, your Chinese name is, yes, you can Google translate your name from English to Chinese, but please ask a local person if it sounds good or bad or things like this. Because uh, sometimes the translator is obviously not so good, okay? Another thing to consider is the amount of strokes in the character. So although you may want a transliteration of your English name to Chinese, uh, some characters such as mine, which I made the mistake of, is super long and difficult to write, especially when you're signing documents all the time. Will you have to do it very frequently? Probably not. After opening the bank account, you really don't have to sign your name as much typically. Um, but they do look prettier when there are more strokes for sure. So something to keep in mind is the amount of strokes. If you want an easier name to write, then of course go for a character. You could ask local people what's an easy name to write. Uh, ask multiple people, by the way. You don't want to meet that one jerk who tells you a ridiculous name, right? Um, and other things are, uh, you know, what to bring now when you go open a bank account. Now, if you're American, you should bring a so your social security card because they will make a copy of that for the F bar. So the F bar, if you're not aware, is I believe it's the foreign bank account report or something like that. Um, it's a law that was passed in America where they require uh, other countries to report what, how much you have in your foreign bank account to America. So yes, it's really frustrating. And in fact, when you go to certain banks that are more private, they can and they probably will try to reject you from opening an account with them because they don't want to deal with the FBAR and IRS in America every year. So I was actually rejected by a few privately owned banks that are international which is why i chose them um just because of the f bar so that's something to keep in mind uh they just told me straight up that they won't let me open an account so be prepared for that so aside from your social security you want to bring your passport of course probably you want to bring your arc if you uh, already obtained it um i think you might need your arc uh when you open it so you might have to wait for that first i believe um and then uh, of course, you want to bring some money to actually deposit in there. Now, once you get your bank or before that, uh, you know, uh, you want to deposit some money. And then 
you'll have to sign the F bar if you are American. So which is basically like a contract stating you sign your rights over to the bank you know, to allow them to send all of your bank accounts um, information, I think annually to show how much money you have in your foreign bank account to America, to the IRS. So it's not unusual. It's nothing uh, like a scam. It is true. You have to sign the F bar to prove that you're okay with Taiwan sending your bank account info to America because of the F bar. And you could do a little research on it yourself. Um, but once you get your bank account, you will most likely get a bank account book. So it just looks like a little booklet and you can put it in a machine and it will print out how much money you have uh, in your bank account. Um, I'm not sure about other countries, but in Taiwan, they, local people love it because they just feel like they see their money. It's proof of how much money they have and it's especially good for the elderly. So to me, it's not really fun to have. I've never used my bank account book, to be honest with you. Um, but uh, basically what it's for is when you do get hired, right, and you have to show your employer your bank account information, you basically give them your bank account book and they'll make a copy of the front page where it has your account information and that's how they would forward you or transfer your money uh, each month to your bank account. And in some cases for one of my banks, um, I was told I could actually reject the bank book and I actually, I think it was beneficial or something like that to not have a bank book. And uh, in that case, ask them to print you a piece of paper with your account information for your employer since you do not have a bank book in this case. Um, now, let's talk very quickly about the stamp. Okay, so this is just to give you an idea. I hope this focuses, but who knows. But it just comes in this little like capsule looking thing. You can hear it in here. And it kind of just slides out oh, this way. Uh, slides out this way. Mine uh, came with this cover. And this is the little ink pad they could use. I don't think I've ever used it to be honest because most banks or whatever that requires a stamp will have their own ink pad. But uh, basically, it kind of looks like this. My camera, I don't think, will focus. Uh, I'm not sure. But um, basically, you could choose the different kinds of materials. So typically, it's either wood or acrylic. If you get really fancy, you could get like um, resin or something or jade in some cases. But I, I don't see the need for that. Most people who buy expensive stamps are typically for like gifts and they keep it in a safe deposit box or something uh, one of my students actually told me uh, if you have a baby you could keep their uh what is it i guess their umbilical cord like what would be their belly but or umbilical cord uh and once it's dried you could encapsulate it into like resin basically and carve out the child's name and keep that forever as a keepsake it sounds bizarre, I know, and some people will also, you know, take a, a little piece of their baby's hair and also, uh, you know, encapsulate it in resin or something and carve their name as sort of a gift for their children. Um, and typically those stamps are not used to open bank accounts or anything. They are just like a special gift to remember or, you know, anyways, just for the children to keep forever. Um, but in most cases, we'll use wood or sort of like this acrylic type of cheap plastic like mine. Um, pros and cons to both, I'm not sure. Uh, I just think it's easier to have the plastic one. I think it's, you know, uh, probably less fragile. Um, there's not any mold problems or things like that. Um, and basically now, when you go there, you show them your name, you'll have to write it down. And then you get to choose the font in which you want them to carve out your name. And then they use a the machine to carve it out. Now in the past, you must be wondering, you know, what is the purpose of these stamps? It seems kind of ridiculous. If for example, you happen to know the font that I use and also my name, then couldn't you just go ahead and make a stamp the same thing? Yeah, kind of, but, um, Actually, in the past, however, it was a beautiful tradition where you had to ask 
you know, someone to actually hand carve you your stamp. So, you know, if you go to different, um, I don't know, carvers or whatever, um, they will have a very unique style for you and your stamp will be very individual. There will be no exact copy. And what I was told is how the bankers will compare to see um, if your stamp is accurate or not is they will print out like on a transparent piece of paper and match it on top of their computer image to see if it's a direct match. So that's something to keep in mind uh, since now a lot of it is computer uh, or machine made. Uh, it's easy to see copies of other people's stamps. So one thing I would suggest is when you're opening your account is to ask them, uh, I want you to verify my signature either through my stamp or my signature, you know, and your signature could be anything. It could be a smiley face or a cat or whatever. Um, something that's you know signed by you i honestly think that's much safer now is to have your own signature compared to these stamps but when you open your account you do need a stamp as far as i know for sure so um, and it's kind of cool to have i think as a souvenir in the future uh you want to make sure you know which stamp it is um and you could also like i said you could find them uh, places to make your stamps especially around cram schools or schools uh, or document kind of places or you can even order them online as well um, and I'll talk about ordering things online uh, in another video what I do to get around when I'm lazy or if I want to find something specific in Taiwan via the internet so I hope that was helpful well, when it comes to opening accounts in Taiwan. If you have any further questions, I will try my very best to answer those for you. Um, oh, and one thing I thought about is I believe you cannot have a joint account in Taiwan. So if you happen to be coming here with a spouse or something, you can only have one name on the account. So most couples uh, in Taiwan uh, will know each other's bank or pa you know ATM password or pin I should say or they will have the bank book and things like that and they share it but it's under one person's name so in Taiwan you cannot have joint accounts so keep that in mind um, you probably have to just have two different bank accounts anyways so again if you have any questions feel free to uh, ask otherwise I'll see you guys later bye